Hi friends, it's Amy at Doki Doki Forest, and today I would like to share with you the journal pages that I created for the journal prompt challenge, Inspired to Create 2023. Um, this is the journal prompt from April 12th, and the word was bunny. Now, this is a super fun journaling challenge that is hosted by Allison over at AJ's Inspired Life and Melissa from Messy Missy Creates. I will have all of the information down below. I will have their channels. You can check them out on YouTube, on Instagram, and you can also check the hashtag inspired to like the number two create underscore 2023 and i will have that below as well so you can see what everyone else is up to okay so i hope i made the journaling challenge clear <laughs> if not please check out melissa or allison's channels and they will explain it far better than i do um but the word for april 12th was bunny and the idea is that you take the word of the week, in this case, it's bunny, and you take each letter and come up with a prompt for each letter. And if you have someone to exchange with, then do that. Um, and that way you get like a surprise and then you have to think outside the box. You're probably wondering what the heck I am painting here. Is it some sort of acorn building? You can see that I've painted and, you know, gone over it and then, decided I didn't like it and then I repaint it and there's a lot of transformations that are going to happen with this and that is because in the word bunny my prompt for why was yurt so I am attempting to draw yurt which I really have no clue how to do I know it's like a big tent house sort of thing and I was looking at pictures and for some reason even though I was looking at pictures my hand was not able to translate that onto the paper very well Okay, so let me tell you what prompts I was given from my friend, and we've been exchanging prompts for the past few weeks now. It's super fun. She always comes up with super creative prompts that I would not have thought of altogether, and it just makes for some real fun, creative time in the studio as I try to figure out how I'm gonna make this work. So the word bunny, the letter B, she gave me bald eagle, U, UFO, N, nymph, the next N was Namaste, and the Y, as I mentioned before, was Yurt. Yurt. I feel like I said that weird. Um, yeah, so that is what I had, and I sort of was sitting there sketching out some ideas on Procreate. Sometimes I'll do that. The nice thing about using Procreate is that I can bring it with me everywhere and just sketch. So I could be sitting on the couch at night with everybody watching a show, just sort of sketching, or I could be sketching in the car while I'm waiting to pick up the kids, you know. So it comes in handy at, you know, during those times when I'm kind of uh, not up in the studio space. And I do have a little story snippet, again, just a little story snippet that goes with this page. So I will share that with you at the end once it's all finished and you can see the cast of characters that have all gathered at the yurt. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm sketching, drawing. My UFO came out a little bit flowery, the way I drew the grooves and stuff. I, I was trying to make it more and more rounded and then I realized I kind of made it look like a flower, but that's okay because UFOs can look like anything, right? They come from all over the universe. And then the wood nymph is the one who started the namaste. So she's doing the yoga pose and greeting, you know, everyone namaste. And then the passing by UFO also, the alien decided that, you know, they would also like to do namaste. So they're trying it as well. And then my younger son gave me the idea of a cow because I was sketching my UFO next to him. And he's like, well, you got to have a cow if you have a UFO. And I was like, okay, that's, that's really funny. I will add a cow. And the cow is also doing namaste. It doesn't seem to mind that it's being abducted. So maybe it's, you know, ready to explore the universe. It's ready to get off this planet and go see what the heck else is out there. And then my son also said that, you know, I should have a little hammy, a little hamster. So there's a little hamster too. So some other little characters popped up that weren't originally on the list, but 
they had to be made. And this bald eagle, he is, you know, he has this determined look on his face. He's a serious, a serious bald eagle. He has a lot on his mind. And I'm trying my shimmer paints here because I thought they would look nice with the spaceship and give it a nice little shine. So I am using that on there. The alien is just kind of floating there in his little cabin in the UFO. And this is a wood nymph, so I wanted her to have foresty clothes that were made from leaves, and I wanted her um, arms and legs, her face, everything, her body to be like wood grained, and it's sort of a bark-like appearance. And then I wanted her to have some branches that are just growing right out of her hair. And then of course, I'm going to give her earth tones greens and browns and a little bit of yellow and I'll, I'll jazz up her hair though I'll give her another little color oh there we go pink I was thinking of flowers blooming in the spring so she's got some pink maybe her hair changes with each season and right now it's the spring season and there's a little bird that's nestled in her hair as well because of course all the critters and birds love to be around the wood nymph she is a forest friend She's very peaceful. She takes good care of them. And they, in turn, take good care of her. They bring her berries and all sorts of little treats. But this was, this was really fun, though. The, these prompts I did have to sit with for a while, as I usually do. And that part is both scary and also fun. Because, you know, you're sitting there like, oh, boy, I hope I can... Hope I can make this work. I hope I can pull this together. But it's also really fun because it's like the part that challenges your brain and you know, then you wind up, well, maybe I could do this and you try it. And as long as you don't give up, you know, like that yurt is giving me a lot of trouble. Like I had painted one and I tried to line it with a Posca pen and bring it to life and I didn't like it. And I just wound up repainting it. And I'm leaving all of that in, so you got to see that in the beginning, and you'll see me work on it again after I'm done painting here. And um, I'm leaving all that in because that was a struggle. These characters were pretty easy for me, like they, they kind of just came to life as soon as I started really thinking about what they were doing and what was happening. But the yurt was the troublesome part, which makes sense because I generally have struggles with buildings, vehicles, that sort of thing. Um, but the yurt isn't a complicated design, so I felt like I wasn't sure why I was struggling with it. But I was, and um, it did take me the course of several days to do these pages. I didn't do it all at once, so you can see like my, my sleeve will change, you know, if I might have pajamas on in one part and the sweater on in the next part. <laughs> That's just because I was working on it over the course of a couple of days here and there when I got the time. And also, uh, you know, it was good for me to walk away from the background when it was frustrating me. Not super frustrating, just one of those things where I just felt like it wasn't working. So it was good to walk away, you know, go have a snack, go hang out with the kids or, you know, talk with the hubby or whatever. Just, just get away for a bit and then come back and see if I had fresh eyes and I could look at it and think like, oh, yeah, if I just change this, or maybe I just come back, here, here we go, here we go, see, look at this. I'm trying to make it work, I'm trying, but you'll see at some point I'm just like, mm, no. And then <laughs> I just picked over it. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just gotta do that. It's like, you just gotta blow it up and, um, don't give up just you know blow it up and try again so that's what i am doing this is your what 2.0 i'm not sure there were a few of them they had to come and rebuild this yurt many times <laughs> and then i was painting fairies in another video and i was using this paper pack i got at the dollar tree and it just has all these random papers in there and at some point i think i was making breakfast and i thought what if I look at those papers? Because some of them are really small 
and it might be fun to use it you know use one paper for a door and maybe some windows and kind of do it that way that way it's a little more mixed media and you know I don't know I just thought that might work so that's what I did I, I came up I went through my papers and I decided that yes I would make a door out of one paper and I would make the windows out of other paper and now I feel like the yurt is working for me so I'm gluing down my windows and I'm thinking as I'm doing this I'm not even sure how much of this yurt is going to is going to show because once I stick the characters on it might be really covered but that's okay I'm just gonna finish this and then you know we'll see what happens and then I just wanted to have some more color on the door I wanted to differentiate between the little windows and the wood and then I'm just trying to add some shading here to sort of make it look more like the like kind of poofy tent top that a yurt would have. I have never been in a yurt, have you? I've never, uh, never been in one. I used to watch the show Hayori's, oh my gosh, what was it called? It wasn't Hayori's, I think it was, it was Hayori's Bed and Breakfast, I think it was called. And it was this really cute show from Korea and she and her husband had a really cute home and they would invite people they turned it into like a bed and breakfast and they would invite people to come and stay with them and they had they were like former musicians that were really famous and toured but they decided they just wanted to have a simple life and they sold all their possessions and they moved into this little cute home that had land and they had dogs and you know, they just um, really had a cozy, simple life, and it was infectious. The people who stayed with them, you know, they wanted to live the same way and really influence them. What's the point? Well, season two, they had a yurt, so that's where I'm going with this. Because they didn't have a lot of room in their home for these guests, so they wound up getting a yurt and setting that up outside. And then the show left Netflix and I never got to see the end of season two but I know they would go out to the yurt and it would be winter time and they would have a cozy fire in the middle in the fireplace and they were roasting sweet potatoes and um so that's my biggest influence of a yurt is watching that show and and seeing that <laughs> but it did look very nice and here I'm just trying to shine up these pages because I felt like they looked a little drab i just wanted them to look a little more magical so i'm adding some shimmery ink to it and the little um what's it called opal magic it's a little tin i have i try to put some of that pink in the sky and it's pretty much done so settle in and i will tell you the tale of these pages a picnic luncheon was planned by the blue yurt deep in the forest all were welcome to come Truth be told, it was a meeting, but it was guaranteed that more guests would arrive if it were called a luncheon instead. The wood nymph was there to welcome everyone to the space with a gentle namaste greeting. She was delighted to see the animals and even an alien passing by, also taking up this respectful salutation. Then the bald eagle arrived without saying hello, but rather by talking at length about himself. Indeed, his stories took up the entire meeting. Realizing they would never get a word in, the wood nymph and the hamster winked at one another. Time to plan another picnic luncheon. Thank you all so much for coming by. I hope you enjoyed seeing these pages. Let me know if you're doing this challenge, and I hope you have a wonderful week. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.